Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to read the story Duck and Goose, written and illustrated by Tad Hills. It's a story about a duck and a goose who find an egg, and they do their very best to take care of that egg so that it can hatch. It's one of my favorites. I hope you enjoy it. Oh my, what is that? Duck quacked. That's a silly question, Goose honked. It's a big egg, of course. Of course it is an egg. I know that, huffed Duck. What I mean is, where did it come from? Goose looked skyward. He looked to the river. He looked to the fields. He thought very hard. Who are you? He asked finally. I, said Duck, huffing out his feathered chest, am the one whose egg this is. I saw it first. Goose quickly raised one webbed foot. It's mine. I touched it first. Hey, you should never put your dirty foot on an egg, Duck scolded. Don't you know anything about caring for eggs? Yes, I do, Goose cried out. Stop yelling, Duck yelled, then whispered forcefully. Don't you know that you and your screaming are very likely disturbing the baby bird who is trying to take a snooze inside this egg? Goose wished that Duck wasn't right. He lowered his head and whispered softly, I'm so very sorry. Go back to sleep in there. My, that's quite a beauty you have, called a bluebird from across the river. Thank you. It's mine, quacked Duck. Actually, it's mine, honked Goose. Thank you. So, asked Duck, what do we do now? We should do something, suggested Goose. Yes, you are right. Good thinking, agreed Duck. Like what? And this is what he's imagining. He built a fence around the egg and put up these signs. This is private property. Duck's egg. No geese allowed. No honking. Five dollar fine. Duck and Goose each thought. And this is what Goose is thinking. He built a fence around the egg and put up these signs. If you are a duck, keep walking. No ducks beyond this point. Quiet, please. Absolutely no quacking in this area. Well, we must keep the egg warm until the fuzzy little occupant is ready to come out, said Goose. Excellent idea, exclaimed Duck. He pushed past Goose. Step aside and I shall do just that. But Goose was quick too. After a flurry of fussing, grunting and groaning, slipping and sliding, honking and quacking, Duck and Goose found themselves back to back. Scoot over, I don't have any room, complained Duck. You are much closer to me than I am to you. Stop yelling in my ear, Goose. Shh, Goose hushed, pointing at the round thing beneath them. Yes, 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 we must remember, quiet, 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 we mustn't disturb this little one. And so they sat very still and very quiet, waiting. For a long time they waited. And waited. They listened to the crickets chirp and the frogs burp. I'm going to teach this baby bird to quack like a duck, Duck boasted. Well, I'm going to teach it to honk like a goose, Goose honked back. I'm going to teach this baby bird to waddle, Goose added. So am I, Duck said. They heard the pitter-patter of the rain. I'm going to teach this baby bird to swim, Duck said. Me too, Goose said. To pass the time, they sniffed wildflowers in the warm sun and shared breadcrumbs while Goose taught Duck to honk. They watched the sun set in the sky and Duck taught Goose to quack. They counted the stars in the night sky. Let's teach our baby to fly, said Goose. 
Good idea, said Duck. I'm sure our baby will be a fast learner, said Duck. If it takes after you and me, I'm sure you're right, agreed Goose. What do you notice that's happening in this story? It looks to me like Duck and Goose are becoming friends now. And now they're not arguing about the egg anymore. They're saying that it's their egg together. And there they are. It looks like they fell fast asleep. Together, they waited until... <gasps> Did you feel that, Duck? Duck nodded. Yes! Did you feel that, Goose? Goose nodded. It's time, Goose, it's time, Duck squawked. Oh, they look so excited. Quickly, Duck slid down and started running in circles around their egg. What should we do now, he hollered. I think we should remain calm, Goose yelled back. Excuse me, a little voice called out. Duck stopped. In all the exciting confusion, he had failed to notice the bluebird kicking their egg. Can I play too, she asked. Play? This is no time for play, yelled Duck. This is no time for games, yelled Goose. And what's with the kicking? I was only trying to get your attention, said the little blur bird. Well, you got it, Duck huffed. False alarm, Goose. Go back to work. Can't you see that we are very busy here? Goose explained to the bluebird. This is serious business. This is perhaps the most important moment of our lives. Oh my, I am sorry, apologized the bluebird. I had no idea. I just thought that maybe I could play with your ball. It really is a nice one, she added. And then she flew away. <gasps> Goose gulped. Did she say ball? He whispered to Duck. You know, I did have my doubts, Duck finally said. It is a bit squishier than most eggs I've seen. Yes, and I must say, I was somewhat suspicious of those big dots, Goose admitted. It may not be an egg, but it is lovely, said Duck. Oh, absolutely, Duck, Goose agreed. It's a keeper. As the crickets chirped, the frogs burped, and the grass swayed in a gentle breeze, Goose quacked and Duck honked. And the ball bounced, rolled, and sometimes even flew. So it wasn't an egg after all. It was a ball the whole time. But now and Duck and Goose each have a new best friend. Wasn't that a nice story? See you next time. Bye.